Speculative question. What do you suspect the role of psychedelics played in our evolution and development? Uh, we've, we've talked about psychedelics a few, a, a few places. Yeah. Um, almost, no, many, many cultures have some form of psychotropics, psychedelics, hallucinogens, entheogens, pick your, pick your word. Or a behavior that triggers these things. Or we have sweat lodges yeah. and, and such uh, ecstatic dancing for, for days on end. Um, yeah, so the pursuit of ecstasis um, and psychedelics is more than adjacent to, to that um, is, I think, probably universal in cultures um, and has, well, you looked like, do you have something to say? I got things to say, but okay. you, you were no. headed somewhere. Go for it. Oh, I'm... <laughs> All I was going to say is riffing off of what you were getting at. It's so common in various cultures that we have to assume that this is something that human beings regularly discover and that they engage when they have, when a culture has availed itself of the power to do this. Sometimes it's limited to one group within a culture, a shamanistic class. Um, but basically it's a, it's a hack where you can access parts of uh, the product of your subconscious mind. You can put your conscious mind in touch with it. And that that's a very generative thing that at some level it's like turning up the, um, the mutation rate on a genetic system. You're turning up the equivalent of the mutation rate or the porousness of a boundary within the consciousness system. And it results in, you know, yeah, Basically, that's I like that. The poor it expand it enhances the porousness of the boundary of some consciousness system. It may increase individual consciousness, but also increase the ability for actual exchange across interpersonal boundaries. Absolutely. And you know, there are lots of such hacks. Mm -hmm. Leaving a notebook by the side of your bed and writing down the content of your dreams is mm -hmm. a hack, right? Yeah. You are wired. I have an interesting point about this at some point, but you are wired to forget the content of your dreams, right? Now, you're not wired to forget the content of every dream, but you're wired to forget the content of most of them. And so you can hack that system by taking the little period of time in which your memory of the dream evaporates and using it to write down enough of the dream that you can recover something meaningful from it. That's a hack. And um, psychedelics and other behaviors that cause those hallucinations do the same same kind of trick, just gaining access to something that is ordinarily outside the scope of what you can can uh, contact. Yeah. So with regard to um, what role they may have played long term, uh, it's impossible to know they don't, you know, they leave no trace in the archaeological record as far as I know. I don't know of any um, suggested trace in the archaeological record, but um, it is it is therefore mere untestable arm waving to propose something like psychedelics may have been um, part of what the expansion of the prefrontal frontal lobe was about. We can't possibly know. Well, they leave some record. What kind? Uh, for example, the Mazatec people mm -hmm. and Salvia. Salvia is a plant only known, if I've got this right, only known from Mazatec gardens. So, so salvia is a giant genus. You're talking about the particular... Salvia, salvia divin, Oops. divinorum, the, the hallucinogenic one. Okay. Um, yes, the street name is salvia, if that tells you anything. Diviner sage? Yeah, diviner sage. Mm -hmm. uh, salvia divinorum. Um, is only known from this plant grown by the Mazatec. And that tells you that basically you have a speciation event, whatever its nearest mm -hmm. uh, relative is in the mints, this mint is now a, a exclusively a cultivar. It's like a, um, it's like a domestic goat, you know, there are goats in the world, but it's, it only exists in the context of people. Um, and so anyway, that's, but you're not recommending smoking goats, a uh, smoked goat can be good. It's different. Yes, mm -hmm. it is different. Um, but anyway, the point is that's leaving a record because what you've got is yeah. you don't have the no, fossil. That's awesome. Yep. Um, but you have the product 
you know, you have the descendants of the most recent common ancestor of... And you maybe could, I mean, you could do an attempt at a molecular clock to assess the speciation event, the, the time since um, this was, uh, since this split from its most recent, or from its sister taxon, which yep. I don't know what it is, and I don't know if the work's been done, and of course it's different in plants and in animals um, to do that kind of work. Uh, yeah. So oh, well, actually, it's so I I just pulled up Wikipedia, uh, so who knows? But botanists have not determined whether Salvia divinorum is a cultigen or a hybrid, because native plants reproduce vegetatively and rarely produce viable seed. Um, so you know, either either way, um, really, it's well. Yeah. I, I mean, either I, way, it's leaving the record of some kind of an event that we don't have a direct yeah. record of. 